This is Mr. Martin, and uh, this video is on uh, section 4.6 for math analysis. Uh, it's 4.6, and we are graphing other trig functions. Okay, so uh, this video um, is really going to be talking about graphing tangent and cotangent. Um, so <coughs> If you've done this before, this will be a good review. If you haven't done this before and you have uh, questions, make sure that you come see me at some point and ask. So um, let's start out with a little bit of information, tangent and cotangent. So let's take a look at um, the unit circle and let's look at our quadrant angle. So over here at 0, um, I've got 1, 0, and over here at pi over 2, I've got 0, 1. Over here at pi, I have negative 1, 0. Down here at 3 pi over 2, I've got 0, negative 1. And then back over here at 2 pi, I have 1, 0 again. So if we're looking at the tangent and cotangent at each of these spots, we need to realize that any time we divide by 0, that function is going to be undefined. So um, tangent is y over x. So when I take uh, 0 divided by 1 over here at 0, I'm going to get 0. But over here at pi over 2, when I do 1 divided by 0, I'm going to get that the tangent is undefined. So the tangent is undefined. Let's try that again. Undefined when x equals 0. Okay, so basically this is going to be at, uh, for example, negative pi over 2, and I'll get to a minute why I started there, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2. So basically anytime we're at the top of the circle or at the bottom of the circle. Now the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent, so now when we flip it and we have x over y, the cotangent is undefined when y equals 0. Okay, so y is going to be 0 anytime we're on the x-axis over here or over here. So at 0, at pi, at 2 pi, 3 pi, and so on. So at these spots, when we're trying to graph tangent and cotangent, at these spots where it's undefined, we're going to end up with an asymptote. So asymptotes will occur at points where the function is undefined. And um, what we're going to do is when we're graphing is we're going to find two asymptotes that are next to each other and that's going to help us do the graph. So when graphing when graphing find two adjacent asymptotes. Okay, so for tangent, what we're going to do is we want to find when bx minus c equals negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Now we could use um, pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 if you wanted to. Um, typically we'll just use negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2 but if you want to do something different you can. And then for cotangent we want to find 
when bx minus c equals 0 and pi. So when we set bx minus c equal to these two values, it will give us the values of x that are on the top or the bottom that put our graph at the top or the bottom where it's undefined. So, um, and once we get into examples, you'll see more how to uh, find the asymptotes. All right, so let's look at the uh, characteristics of the graph like we did for uh, sine and cosine. Characteristics of graphs. All right, so um, let's talk about the amplitude first. So um, amplitude tells us how high and how low the graph goes from that middle spot. Um, it tells us you know, where the extreme are going to be. But if you know what the tangent and cotangent graphs look like, they continue on forever um, up and forever down. So for this, um, the amplitude does not apply. Okay, we'll figure out the value of A, um, but we're not going to use it to find amplitude because it doesn't really apply. And then for period, period for tangent and cotangent is different. Instead of being 2 pi over B, it's just pi over B. Okay, not 2 pi over B. Alright, and then we'll also talk about the phase shift which is our horizontal translation, and that's still C over B. And we'll talk about the vertical shift. And that's still the value of D. And we're also going to talk about uh, distance between key points. Distance between key points. Okay, that's still going to be period divided by 4, but we're going to use this value um, a little bit differently than we did before, uh, mainly to help us label our graph. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of examples. So we'll start with a tangent graph so we're going to graph three periods of y equals three tan two x alright so um, let's start out the same way we did before let's find a b c and d so a is uh, still the coefficient instead of our trig function, so that's going to be 3. And b is going to be 2. And then c is 0, and d is 0. And then from there, um, let's go ahead and find the period. So the period is pi over b, so that's pi over 2. The phase shift, again, is c over b. So that's going to be 0. The vertical shift is D, so that's also 0. And our distance between key points is going to be our period, which is pi over 2, divided by 4, which is pi over 8. So really, this value here is going to tell us how to um, do our graph, which we're going to start right now. Let me just insert a little more space here. Okay, so I am going to start drawing my graph. Most of the time I'll have some axes for you, but for these examples you can just draw on your own. Let's try that again.
All right, close enough. Okay, so um, I'm going to make a couple of marks over on this side. Let's make them as equally spaced as I can. And then I'm going to make a whole bunch of marks over here. Let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So let's start with that. And we're going to label every pi over eight. So I've got pi over eight and then two pi over eight, which would be pi over four, and then three pi over eight, and then four pi over eight, which would be pi over two, and then let's do a couple over here, negative pi over eight and negative pi over four. Okay, so here's what our graph is going to look like. What I need to do is I need to figure out where my asymptotes will be. So if we look back up here, the asymptotes are going to be when the bx minus c is equal to negative pi over 2, and there'll be another one when the bx minus c is equal to pi over 2. So I'm going to um, write two equations. So my bx minus c is simply 2x, so 2x is equal to negative pi over 2. And then I'm going to solve this for x, so x is equal to negative pi over 4. And then my second one is when 2x is equal to positive pi over 2, so x is going to equal pi over 4. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to draw an asymptote at uh, negative pi over 4. Make sure you make these dotted. And another one here at positive pi over 4. And if you notice, I've got one, two, three spots in between the asymptotes. If you've done everything correctly, you should get three spots in between. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to take these three spots and use those for my chart. So I'm going to make my chart. I've got x, I've got uh, 3, tan, 2x, and again you should be able to do these without a calculator um, and the quiz uh, when you're graphing these will be no calculator. Um, so I'm going to put in negative pi over 8 and then my next value over here is 0 and then positive pi over 8. Alright, so this one is going to be 3 times the tangent of 2 times pi over, negative pi over 8 is negative pi over 4. The tangent at negative pi over 4 is going to be negative 1, so that's times 3, so that's negative 3. And then 3 tan 0, so at 0, my tangent is 0 over 1, so that's 0, 0 times 3 is 0. And then at pi over 8, I've got 3 times the tangent of uh, 2 times pi over 8 is pi over 4. Tangent at pi over 4 is 1, so 3 times 1 is 3. So now I've got my three ordered pairs that I can graph over here. I've got negative pi over 8. I'm just going to put 3 up here. I'm going to put uh, negative 3 over there. So uh, negative pi over 8, negative 3. I've got 0, 0, and pi over 8, 3. And I could make a nice smooth curve. It's going to approach our asymptotes, but it's not going to cross or touch. And make sure you make those nice and smooth. So this is one period of tangent. Now we have to graph two more. So I know that in between every pair of asymptotes, I should have three points. So I'm going to go over one, two, three, skip those three, and then draw another asymptote at the fourth mark. And then do that again. One, two, three, skip those three and draw my asymptotes and then I know my point in the middle of each interval is right on the axis so that's at zero my point to the left was down three my point to the right was up three down three up three and again drawing a nice smooth curve that approaches the asymptote and there you have three cycles okay watch